Greetings and welcome back to the Galley of the Sun. Tomorrow we shall dine on Barox. Therefore tonight we must make the innards and give them time to mingle in the cold romantic refrigerator overnight, becoming even more delicious. Many people think of Barox as a Midwestern food and uh, it's sort of true. Uh, in 1762, German-born princess Catherine the Great, probably born just Catherine the Adequate and then became great, I don't know, but anyway, uh, ascended to the throne of Russia. While there, she invited some of her former countrymen to come and settle the southern European regions of Russia to become farmers with the caveat that they can keep their language and their culture. And many Germans took her up on that, including many German Mennonites. Now, later on, as the political landscape changed in Russia, many of those German Mennonites relocated in the 1870s to the American Midwest, and they brought with them Barocks. Now, those Germans were known as Volga Germans, and there are some uh, famous descendants of uh, those Volga Germans uh, that you know. Uh, the singer John Denver, um, Lawrence Welk, perhaps you've seen before, or uh, Joe Exotic. Yeah, really. Okay, well, let's get to making these Barocks. Uh, we're gonna make three different versions of Barocks. We're gonna make traditional, and then a couple Galley of the Sun twists. We'll get to that uh, when we get there. First off, this starts off with eight cloves of minced garlic. Of course, you came to the Galley of the Sun, had to expect garlic. All right, now I gotta wash my sticky garlic paws. Next, we're gonna finely dice a medium onion. Next, we need six cups of finely shredded green cabbage. Okay, so I figured out a quarter of the cabbage is just under two cups, so whole thing. Makes it nice and easy. All right, all the prep work's done. So we have our minced garlic, we have our finely chopped onions and finely shredded cabbage. I uh, have about five tablespoons here of red wine vinegar, one and a half tablespoons of smoked paprika, a, table, or a teaspoon and a half of caraway seeds, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and ground beef. Uh, recipe says a pound and a half of uh, ground beef. We are, of course, using aged ground beef that we did ourselves here at the Galley of the Sun. Check out the video. All right, let's get it cooking. So that's a whole lot of cabbage that we gotta cook. So I've got my largest non-cast iron skillet here. Why non-cast iron? Well, because the cast iron skillet is over there next to the floor and it's heavy, and uh, I know it doesn't look it, but I'm sort of old. So, skillet right here, easy day. All right, let's get the brown on that ground beef. If you think you might be liking what you're seeing, why don't you go ahead and hit that like button right now. It'll save you time later. Uh, in fact, hit that subscribe button too. After watching this video, is there a different way that you do your beer ox? Is there something similar to beer ox that you like? Hey, put that down in the comments. Love to hear what you have to say. Now that the ground beef's about halfway there, I'm going to add the nutmeg, the caraway seeds, and the smoked paprika. Take my heat down to medium low and finish this up. Oh, that's an amazing smell. All right, I'm happy with the ground beef, so I'm gonna remove it with a slotted spoon, leaving behind the rendered beef fat from it for the next step. Now we're gonna add a couple, three, four tablespoons of olive oil. And once shimmering, we're gonna add our cabbage and onions and stir these until they're brown. This is gonna take about 10 to 15 minutes. You know, it's been a while since we did a shout out to some of our favorite viewers. So, hey, if you have some time, go check out Susan at Rhubarb and Cod. She makes fantastic stuff, um, beautiful cinematography, definitely a channel to check it out. And another one to check out is Maple Cook. 
He makes some amazing stuff. His, uh, I don't know, 48 ingredient mole just looks incredible. I still haven't tried it. I need to get to it, but uh, he does some amazing stuff. So check his stuff out. And yes, both those shouts out, shout outs are to Canadians. We're big in Canada. We're international. The cabbage onion mixture is about five minutes away from where I want it to be. So now I'm going to add the garlic. Now you don't want to short your time on the cooking of the cabbage and the onions. You want to cook a lot of the water out of there. Because remember, this is going to go inside a pillowy dough. So we don't want too much moisture left behind, making that bottom soggy. Nobody likes a soggy bottom. Nobody. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with where my cabbage is right now. So the ground beef goes back in. And we'll get all that mixed up. The cabbage, the garlic, the smoked paprika. Oh God, this smells good. Okay, it's all mixed together. Now we're gonna give it a healthy pinch of salt and pepper. And we're gonna add the five tablespoons of red wine vinegar. Get that all mixed together. Give it a quick taste. Oh, it's gonna be so good. All right, so as I said, I'm making three different versions. I am making a traditional version and two other versions. So I need to divide this into three. The traditional and one of the versions is gonna go in the bowl and in the refrigerator. And then I'll leave one third in here and we'll do something to it in a second. So what I'm trying to do now is take out two thirds of the mixture. Oh my God, I flung shit everywhere. Char's gonna kill me. Okay, that feels like it's two thirds. I'm gonna let this cool and then cover it in plastic wrap and put it in the fridge. This last third is gonna get mixed with some fire roasted hatch green chili peppers. Definitely not traditional. It looks like a decent amount there. I'm guessing that's between a half and a quarter cup. This could be the worst stirring implement ever. Oh, that hatch green chili smell mixed with everything else. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, all we need to do is mix those up. Those fire rested hash green chilies are already cooked. So turn off the heat. Set that aside once that cools that's going to go in a bowl get plastic wrap and go in the refrigerator overnight tomorrow we will get to making the dough and then we'll construct our beer rocks and make that third version so see you tomorrow so here we are on beer rock day it's time to make the dough so in my stand mixer bowl goes and I'm doubling the dough recipe because I'd much rather have leftover dough than leftover filling. So four cups of all-purpose flour go into my bowl along with two packs of dry active yeast. The next step is to heat two cups of milk, two third cups of butter, two teaspoons of salt, and a cup of sugar until it reaches uh, about 115 to 120 degrees. Then we're gonna pour it in here. And to keep things traditional, just like the Volga German Mennonites of old did, I'm gonna check that temperature with my infrared thermometer. Okay, we are there. So then I dump my wet ingredients into my dry. Then we're gonna get that on the mixer. Put in the dough hook and then we're going to mix at low speed for about a half minute and then bump it up for about three minutes. We're also going to add our four cackle berries at this point. Now as we continue to mix we're going to slowly add the remaining five cups of the flour until we have a moderately stiff smooth elastic dough. We're going to pause here and scrape it down. <clears throat> All right, 
I know you bakers out there are laughing your asses off at me. I will admit of all my areas of cooking, my baking is the one that intimidates me the most. And then I'm probably the least experienced that, but I think we're there. So what we're going to do is take a bowl, going to get it greased down to some olive oil, get this dough out for my bowl, get it in the pan, turn it a couple times, get it fully coated. Now we're going to cover that, put it in a warm place and let it rest for at least an hour. And then clean up this mess. Okay, time to start rolling out the dough and making some beer ox. Since I made a double batch and I don't want to take up too much area, I'm going to get the dough, split it in half, and then we're gonna roll it out until it's about a eh, quarter inch thick or so. So this dough has risen for an hour and then I punched it down, waited another 10, 15 minutes, and now it's time to go. Get our surface floured here. Not quite as thin as I want it. It's still pretty elastic, so I'm gonna let it rest 10 minutes and then give it another shot. Now we're gonna cut them into roughly three inch by three inch squares. If I don't quite get a square, that's okay. I've got more dough that I have to uh, work with. So we'll just take those weird looking pieces and mix them in with the other dough. Now time to start making our three different beer rocks. So as I said before, doing one that's traditional. The second one we mixed in hatch green chilies last night with. The third one, I've taken about two cups of shredded cougar gold cheese. Now we talked about this cheese back in the Sausage Fest video. This is cheese made at Washington State University by the students. It is super sharp, it is incredible. I got my three tablespoon uh, baller here and we're gonna put uh, a lump of filling in each one of these. Before we get too far, let's make sure the three tablespoons is gonna work for the size of squares I have. So I'm gonna take the two corners, I'm gonna bring them up, and have them meet, and then bring the other two corners up and then pinch all the seams together. Having wet fingers will help with this, which I don't have right now, but I wanted to make sure. There we go. We got our first beer rock. That is enough meat, the right amount of meat for those beer rocks. If you can pack that filling down in your bowler, that certainly helps keeping it together for the sealing process. Now a little bit of trial and error. I know with empanadas, it's easier to seal if I'm holding it in my hand. We'll see if the same works with beer rocks. Incredibly, we ended up with the right amount of dough. I'm letting this rest because this is all the pieces. Um, then we had to mush it back into a dough ball and get it rolled out. And it's being a little resistive right now, but uh, we got our three different kinds. We got our cheese, we got our hatch green chili, we got our traditional. They're gonna go into the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. You can see that as time went along and different people helped, uh, I got all sorts of different shapes here. So at some point, artistry went out the window, that's fine. Always expect it to take way longer to stuff than what you plan for. So I'm running against the deadline, so didn't have a choice, had to get this together. So we'll see you at the tasting. Well, the beer rocks came out, um, they look fantastic. Even the ugly ones look fantastic. Our artistic ones look a little bit better. So I'm gonna give one of the cheese ones a try. Mmm, though not traditional, the cheese ones are fantastic. The spices and the meat, absolutely excellent. You definitely have to give this a try. Hey, thanks for joining us. And until next time, fair winds and following seas. So the next step, the next step is to heat two cups of milk, two third cups of butter, two tables. The next step is to heat two cups of milk, two cups.